At this point, I'm going to stop giving niggas compliments because y'all always make me a liar. What up? It's your boy, Smoke Joe Star, a.k.a. Smoke Man Joe, a.k.a. Light Medium Heavy S Jump, Light Medium Jump, Light Medium Heavy S. And we are back with another video adding on to the bullshittery that is currently the black anime community and sexual assault. We have avid Twitter user and comedian long bitch griffy who is just a, a pr expert like if you ever need to get out of some shit or rebrand your image call this guy this is this is probably who the taliban called because he is just a fucking demon when it comes to rebranding but we have a we have a clip of him in a twitter spaces video and uh i'm gonna just let that full clip play out so you get the whole context mind you none of this has been doctored this is all raw captured footage from another Twitter user that I got from their Twitter. So, shout outs to them. But uh, I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna just let this shit roll. It's about a minute and a half, two minutes, but it, it's very important. So, here you go. And you don't pick up on body language. Listen, because this is Twitter, and you bitches don't be listening. If you lack social cues, and you can't pick up on body language verbally tell people no because then you put yourself in a position where you have to come out two months later and say some shit that was that, that, totally fucking that, that was totally fucking bizarre and that is why the situation is not fair and that is why I'm hurt. That is why I'm upset. I'm not upset because of the allegations. I'm fucking upset because this whole situation is being misinterpreted. And a person, and yes, Heavenly did admit to a couple of things, but he, he, you have to understand. And I, and that, this is why I told him to sign off of fucking Twitch when he got on. He was speaking based on emotions. He didn't know what to fucking do. I don't know what to fucking do, but the only thing I can fucking do in this situation, and it fucking hurts, bro, this shit fucking sucks. <laughs> because I fucking know that man, bro. I fucking know that, bro. I fucking know that man. And this thing is not a fucking predator. Y'all got me fucked up. Y'all got me fucked up. This shit is fucked up. It's fucked up. All of my friends who really fucking know me know I'm not with this bullshit. I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm not with this bullshit. And I'm not defending nobody. But it's not fucking fair. And it's not fucking fair to you creators who who, who literally come out and say... Oh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'll stand first woman without even understanding the full fucking situation. And that's what and, and, and that's so fucking disappointing. Fucking oof, nigga. There's a lot to unpack there. So I want to keep it brief because we are going to be talking about it on the podcast. Um, Black Plague podcast. Follow it on any fucking platform that has podcasts. But the, the first point that Griffey made was that heavenly control supposedly can't understand body language and social cues so my thing with that is if he can't understand body language and social cues to mean i don't want to do this then that also means that he can't understand social cues or body language that means yes i want to do this and that line, that line of excuse has always been a little bit of flawed logic because if you can make the assumption that somebody wants to engage in sexual activity with you based on their body language, then that affirms that you understand the body language. If you understand it far enough to mean yes, that directly conversely means that you can understand it enough to mean no and you can't you can't fall back and say well i didn't understand the body language when you understood the body language enough to engage in the activity in the first place 
So that, that shit ain't flying with me. Secondly, verbally telling somebody no. Are, are you fucking joking, bro? Like, if I pulled up the data for women that have been murdered after verbally rejecting men, it would make your fucking brain melt because that number is very large. There are women in hospitals, on Twitter, in shelters right now, dead even right now for rejecting a dude, telling him no, the dude keeps trying and you motherfuckers don't know how to take no for an answer and move on to somebody else. So in turn, you resort to violence. And now we got somebody daughter dead, somebody mom dead, well, a woman, period. Like the relationship doesn't even matter, but there is a human that has lost their life because they told you fucking no. And especially in the black anime community with niggas like you running the same types of clicks, what the fuck is she gonna do in that situation? As a woman by herself, with multiple dudes who all have notoriety and big fan bases, what what the fuck type of pressure do you think is on her? Like really, just sit back and think about that shit. It's like, oh well, if I say no, then you know, basically something bad. Worst case scenario, I end up dead. Best case scenario, you know, I lose my social my social media status, which ain't really that important in the grand scheme of things, but it does play a part in, you know, reach and basically expansion and branding and shit. And my whole thing, my entire thing with this shit is sexual assault is never the victim's fault. And niggas like Long Bitch Griffey and Heavenly L always, always try to say, well, they should have done this or they shouldn't have done that. Like, nigga, even if they did those things, the result would have been the fucking same. Like, you you literally cannot tell somebody who feels assaulted, no, you weren't. You don't get to make that call. Addressing the next point he made, talking about putting yourself in a position where you have to come out two months later and, you know, basically defend yourself. Nigga, there is no timeline for when a victim of any type of assault, especially sexual, has to do anything their comfort does not work on your schedule she made she said something when she felt she could say something and that in turn enabled other women to feel like they could say something so it's not just it, it's not even like just one person doing this shit just for the just for like letting it happen and then waiting on an opportunity to let to say something about it so she can get some type of fucking gain out of it that's bullshit. That's a bullshit excuse. He then goes on to say that this is Twitter and you bitches don't listen. I use bitches in a general sense a lot, I know, but in, in this regard, from given the context and from the type of person he is, he was directly talking to women. More so talking to victims of sexual assault because that's what the fuck little etchy gal or Kim or whatever her real name is. I believe it's Kim because they refer to her as Kim a couple of times, but that's what that's who he was referring to when he said bitches. So not only are you victim blaming, which is a problem in and of itself, you're also disrespecting people, disrespecting strangers, nigga. Like people, people on Twitter. Listen, dude, that's how that's how we've gotten to this point now where shit will actively change because of the rallying behind it. So people obviously fucking listen because there's been an enormous amount of change with shit like COVID data or just protests or rallying behind causes for better treatment of people across the water from us. Like it's, it's all ties back into social media usage. And you would think a motherfucker with 3 million YouTube subscribers would understand that shit and how important social media image is and what it can be used for good and bad. You go on to say that the situation is being misinterpreted by, by who exactly, nigga? Because she showed videos, she showed chat logs. There are other people corroborating the story and saying, yeah, they did it to me too. So what what's what's being lost in translation that that you have 
just this esoteric knowledge of because now would probably be a good time to present some damning evidence to the contrary because as of right now that nigga is looking pretty fucking guilty bro like he made he went on twitch he went on twitter he made a live he went on instagram basically saying if you want to if you want to unfollow me or distance yourself from me that's cool but in the same breath says you know i've never done anything like that i never have like that's that's an absolute statement and usually when people say that after allegations or evidence has been shown usually means that they're pretty fucking guilty i'm just saying like nine times out of ten you know there are some exceptions of course nothing's ever a hundred percent but given the shit that we had with pro people like pro jared for the people who are familiar with TikTok, niggas like Joe Robe and uh, Gemini Official, the former lead singer for Of Mice and Men, basically came out and said the same shit. Like I would never do anything like that, and then it came out that you know you you were you actually do do shit like that. So I that saying that you you would never or you never have never will, yeah, that's that's a grain of salt statement. Sorry, not buying that. So then you go on to say that, you know, shit's not fair, cry, cry, sniff, sniff. And I would like to offer um, a counterpoint that what whatever's happening right now to Heavenly and what will probably eventually happen to you is 100% fair, 100% earned. Y'all did that shit to yourselves. Like you are extremely emotional and you rush to this man's defense, probably because y'all are in the same circle and you've been a part of that same shit. So... I mean, at this point, it's really just a matter of time. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if, like, you know, a week from now, some came out about you with hardcore evidence. And I know, I know for a fact how y'all move because y'all are all in the same group and you all have a sense of notoriety, or not even notoriety, but a sense of fame in a niche group. So, you know, niggas, niggas, when they, when they get popular, they tend to move like they're made out of Teflon until it gets proven that they're not. So like, ain't no telling how long y'all have been doing this shit, how many people that y'all have done it to, how many people it's affected, how many people didn't say shit about it and just let that shit happen because y'all were clicked up. Whatever, that's neither here nor there. But you can't move the way that you move and then when somebody actually tests your metal, here y'all go wanting to cry and say shit's not fair, woe is me. And for you goofy ass motherfuckers that's gonna be in the comments under this video, wherever I post it, that like to say people like to do shit like that for clout. Yeah, that makes sense. Here, here, here's, a, here's a quiz or a homework assignment that I have for you. Can you name me, without Googling, can you name me 10 of Bill Cosby's victims? If you can't, then that means that they are using sexual assault to get famous. Same thing with this situation. If you were not directly involved, can you give me the real life names of the victims in this situation? If you can't shut the fuck up talking about they're using this shit for clout or they waited for an opportune moment to pop. Like fam, there is copious evidence that heavenly is guilty of this shit and then like that the evidence just keeps on mounting because they're at first it was two people now it's up to three women and i mean i can only imagine it's only gonna grow from there until something actually happens but this is why i say that we black community anime fans gaming fans gamers whatever you you are with these types <coughs> excuse me with these types of people, we have to vet better and make sure that they have the community's best interest at heart. Because you're, they aren't just doing this shit for themselves. They're, they're content creators. Like, they, they make this shit for us and we in turn give them our support. Now that support shouldn't be blind support. You should always, you know, hold people accountable, even people you look up to. But 
th this whole situation is just is absolutely fucking insane, man. Cause like I, I knew, I I knew you were a weird nigga. I really did. Cause I mean, like weird, not in the you know goofy or fucking geeky sense. Like you were an odd nigga. Because like a lot of your comedy is based around uh, sexual assault, feminism, and just generally making fun of quote unquote the woke crowd. And granted, like, you know, a few years ago, shit was, shit was funny. I ain't even gonna lie. Like, the shit was funny a few years ago, and then that's all it became. Like, like the majority of your shit is those same three, four topics. And I'm just like, okay. Like, it, it, leaks, it leaks into life. <laughs> or it leaks into your art. Because art always imitates life. So, I mean, I knew, I should have known then. And like once I once I found out about the first time, like when you first got accused of some shit, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna keep an eye on that because you know that's an allegation turned out to be false. But I know who you run with because I I've never followed Heavenly Control. Like I didn't know who the fuck he was until like 2017. And once I did some digging and watched a few videos and went down his Twitter profile, I was like, yeah, that's not for me. Like out of all the black content creators, he's probably the one I've watched the least. But I, I just, I can't support you niggas, man. I really can't. And to victim blame, like that's, that's how I know that you, you've probably been involved in some shit because you're always trying to absolve either him or yourself of any wrongdoing. And I'm like, nigga, the woman didn't assault herself. Like you can't, you cannot fall back on the, the excuse of social cues. Because if you under if you can if you can make the assumption based off somebody's body language or whatever they were doing at the time that that means yes, then you can understand it enough to mean no. And even then, people's minds change. Like hell, you as as a dude, I'm pretty sure you've been like, you met somebody is like yeah, you know what I I want to date or I want to smash or whatever, and then your fucking mind changed once you were actually there. That happens, and you need to respect that shit. Because just because, like, she's she might have been all over the nigga at 1 a.m. don't mean she want to fuck at 5, 8, 5 p.m. That, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, and if you want to go off of the line, you need to hear a verbal no, then you also need to hear a verbal yes, if that's the case. Because if being all over somebody and, you know, making lewd jokes and shit is, you know, consent to you, then rejection to you should be you trying to make an advance and, and it doesn't go anywhere the first time you try to make it. That's that's how that should work if that's your understanding of consent. If you require a verbal no, then you should also require a verbal yes. Simple as that, goof troop, fucking weirdos. That's it for the video, man. Like... <laughs> Like I said, new episode of the podcast will be up. We'll definitely be talking about this. Um, the episodes go up on Saturdays. Y'all, y'all have a good day. <laughs> y'all have a good day and get consent every fucking time. Holy shit.